Hi, welcome to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson. The basket we're working on today is called our hen basket. And it's a fun basket to make. Uh, it does have some history. The ladies used to put their brood hen in here and carry it to market. The hen would set in here and be calm and wouldn't give anybody a hard time. I'll get right to the cut pattern on this. It's not really a cut pattern today, but this is a material you'll need. You'll need two 8-inch oak hoops, one 12-inch oak hoop, quarter-inch flat, number 6 round reed, and a 10-inch space bar. And I'm going to show you how to make your own space bar here. All I did was take them some scrap of uh, crate that I had, or you could use a heavy cardboard, cut it 10 inches, and put two little grooves, one on each end, a little V, no deeper than a half an inch. And I put some tape in here just to kind of make it a little more sturdy. And that's going to be a space bar that we'll use in just a few minutes. To get started on this, I've taken my hoops, and you can find where it's glued together on a hoop. One will be on top and one will be on the bottom. Put a little line here with a pencil. Mark your centers and do that on, on all three of your hoops. I need to come in here and get some quarter inch flat. And I'm going to find the center here. It doesn't have to be a direct center. I'm going to, and this is going to take a little bit of practice, and I may even, uh, may even uh, fight with it a little bit here, but just take your time. Pull one through. Oops, let's pull it through the first one. You're going to loop it around your first one, trying to keep this all lined up. If it doesn't stay lined up, don't worry too much. And you're going to uh, weave this first one through. Come over and get your second end and weave that one through. Now you have to pull all this together. And you're going to try to get it as tight as you can, trying to keep these center lines lined up. It's a lot to hold right now. Bring the one up here at the front, I'm going to bring through and I'm going to weave it over under again. And I know it looks sloppy right now. It will for a second here while I get this all secured in. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to tighten this all up. Line up my centers. Don't be too concerned with those centers. The reason I like to put my glue marks up here is because this is nice and secure with all this tight weaving up here. And should they ever come unglued, they would stay together because of the weaving. Okay. Now it's just a matter of weaving this back and forth. This is probably the hardest part of the basket, is getting all this to stay together. Pulling it tight. Push it in tight. Butt it up next to each other. Come back here and weave a few of these. And I like to weave it about five inches, give or take, before I put that space bar in. Once I put that in, everything just seems to stay together. You can spend a little bit more time on this and get it maybe a little bit neater than what I am here. I'm having to hurry somewhat. Weave it back and forth. Actually, I'd like to see this just a little bit tighter, a little bit neater done. Pull this through. It's good to work this first piece with a long piece of your quarter inch flat because I don't like to add in up here at all. The top of the handle should be nice and smooth and doesn't need it to be added to. Okay, line up my centers a little bit better. There we go. Let's take a quick measurement here. And I'm about four inches. Let me do just a couple more rounds. Keep it at about five. And then we'll come up here and do another one up here. Pack it all in tight. And then when you end, have one piece going to the left and one piece coming out to the right. 
Now, take your space bar and you're going to put your space bar, and this is going to help hold your handles out while we do the weaving. Kind of look at it, make sure the two center circles are in the middle of the big circle. And I'm going to do a couple more rounds of weaving here. Now, my weaving down here is starting to pull away and to tip a little bit, and that tells me it's time to start adding my spokes, my ribs. And the ribs are going to be made out of the number six round reed. Okay, I've just got some random lengths here. When I cut the ends, I'm going to cut them with a point, and that helps that travel down in here. My first one is my longest piece. It's going to fit right next to my, my large hoop here. Slide it up in there and secure it in there. I'm working it around, and I'm going to cut it, giving myself enough room for it to fit up into this one, probably about an, oh, three quarters to an inch, somewhere in there. I like a nice long point. And then I'm going to, actually, I'm going to pull this out and cut my other piece because what this is like a two-sided basket. What I do to the one side, I should do to the other. Okay, now I'm going to come back in here, put one side in, up there a couple of rows, bring it across, and put the other side in. And this needs to be just a little bit shorter than the than my hoop, which it seems to be. There is room for adjustment in this basket as we work along, so if it happens to work out or work too tight, we can go back in and do some adjusting. And this one's going to slide right in here. This is a very old basket. This one's been around for a long time. And now I'm going to do the same thing, put my points on here so it travels and come in here next to my little hoop, get down in there a couple of rows. Now, this one I want to be, oh, maybe two finger distance from the base of the hoop down at the bottom. Come up here again and cut there. Remember, I have to pull it out because I have to cut one from the other, for the other side. Measure it around. And then come back in and put these pieces in. And they'll stay up in there. And place it on the other side. Next to the small hoop. Not on top of it, but next to it. Okay, now come back. I've added my first two hoops or my first two ribs. I'm always going to add my ribs in multiples of two, two per side. I have two over here, I have to add two over here. I'm going to go under, or pardon me, over my center hoop, under my newly added rib, over the next one, and then over and around my eight inch hoop, pull it tight, and come across an over under pattern And I'm working it. Again, I'm going under my center hoop, over my first rib, under my second rib, over my hoop, back around to the inside and towards the other side. You see my spacer came out. I'm going to finish this to the middle, give it a tight pull, and I'll have to stop and put my spacer back in. And that may happen to you. Don't panic. Just put it back in. Continue weaving this. I would do about three more rows, and I have to go and do the other side yet before we're ready to add more ribs. This is a, in the rib basket family. Butt it up in there tight. Okay, come around to this side. And you're going to just repeat it. I'm over the center hoop, under my first newly added rib, over my second rib, 
under my hoop and around. Keep going like that until these are secured in about three to four rows on each side. And I've already done that on this set here. When they're secured in, after you, well, we really need to do more than three or four rows. We're going to do about two inches. Do about two inches of weaving. Come in here and look at your basket. Make sure everything is still lined up. These should be slightly smaller than your first, your first large hoop here. Now we're going to add some more ribs. You don't have to wet the six round. It's real pliable on its own. And we're not making any drastic turns in here, so it should work dry. Again, I've made my point. I'm going to add my first one here. I'm going to be slightly down, about two fingers distance from the rib that I first added. Come up about an inch and give it a cut. Pull it out because you always have to cut two, one for each side. Make it the same length. Remember to cut your ends with a point. I go ahead and I place this one in because I don't want to confuse it. If I would to just cut them all first, I'm afraid I would get them confused where they go. So when you cut them, just go ahead and put them right in. And this one's being inserted next to my first rib that I added. This basket is going to take anywhere from six to eight ribs on it. And that just depends on, on how wide you space it here and your weaving technique, how tight weaving you do. Now I'm going to add a total of four ribs. This is my second. Again, I'm going to come in here and add it. I'm going to judge this distance to be about halfway between the height of this rib and my rib I just put in and the, the rib that I put in to begin with the shorter one. Pull it out. Remember, I have to cut two. And I'm going to add this one next to my short one on the inside. Okay. And on the other one. The, out, the two sides are a mirror image of each other. So what I do to one, I have to do to the other. Okay, I have to add another rib. I already have a point there. Now I'm going to add this one between my, this rib here and my outside hoop. And again, I'm judging the distance between the height of here and the height of my hoop, about halfway. Pull it out and cut another one. it over and we're going to add this one here. Now I have to add one more because remember I said you had to add in multiples of two. I only have five on each side right now. So I have to find a spot to add another one. And I'm going to pull this one out and I think let's add that next one on the other side of our first one here. And it's going to be about the same height as the very first rib we put in. If it gives you a hard time sliding in there, maybe you could make that point longer. Okay, that's about the right length. Pull it out and I have to cut one more. And I need to do this real quickly. And then I will have I will have um, six ribs on each side of the basket. And that's a real good number to start with. After I get this one in, I want to hold it up and make sure that everything lines up. One side matches the other side. Kind of count my ribs, make sure I have a multiple of two. And everything is lined up, okay? Come back here, and I need to go around my outside hoop. Now I'm going to start dividing these and treating them as individual hoops. 
as individual ribs. I'm going to go over one, under one, over and under. It's just a basic over-under pattern. You will have, sometimes, this weaver will, on this first row, will be running the same. And that's simply because you've added one, which, so to speak, messed up the pattern. And your second one straightened out the pattern. So if they run together, that quarter inch runs together, don't be alarmed. That, that's normal. That has to happen. Continue weaving this down. Weave it on both sides until you get these all secured in. And I would do, again, about three rows. Weaving it on both sides, securing in all this together. Come back and weave on this side about three more rows once you have all six ribs in. Here I have done it. I have all my ribs in. Now what's going to happen is this space in here is a lot less than this space up here. So what we do, we need to build up this area. My goal is to get a pathway right down through the center of the basket that's all equal. Then it's easy to finish the basket up. We'll get another piece ready. My reed kind of dried out here. Continue in my over-under pattern, but what I'm going to do now is occasionally I'm going to start turning on a rib instead of turning on the hoops. And by doing that, I will increase this area and not use up the space in here. But never turn more than once on a rib at a time. I turn back here once to start building up. So you're going to randomly start turning. But what I do on this side, I have to do on the same number of rib on the opposite side. So I've turned here, and I've continued weaving. And I've turned here, and I've woven some more. I did three turns here. And I have three turns over here that match. So what you do to one side, you must do to the other side. Let me show you how to add on a piece. I'm going to end this one. I always end on top. Take out a new piece. Right and wrong sides don't matter anymore because you're turning it and you're using both sides up at one time or another. To add a new piece, I simply slid this one under here. You cannot hide the ends on the, on the rib basket like this, but go back about three or four spokes, hide it on top, weave right on top of the piece that ran out, and keep right on going. I want you to stop every once in a while, look at your ribs, make sure they're still all lined up and they're equal to each other. Keep making these turns. Coming from this way, I would need to go all the way to the other side. I'm going to try to do that quickly for you. I'm going to weave to the other side. And I'm going to do a turn on a rib. I kind of eyeball these ribs now. And I see that this space and the hoop and the first space are kind of the same in distance. So I'm not really worried about that. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to turn on my second rib. And then weave back. What happens, and I've had students get kind of alarm about this, is that you do create these little triangles. Don't worry about that. Nobody sees them. In fact, the students, when they were picking out a basket to do that, they never worried about it until they saw it. So people really don't see those little triangles. You're going to keep on weaving back and forth. Now that I'm to the other side, I turned over here on my second rib, so I again must turn on the second rib on this side. Work this pattern, making your turns where needed until you get this pathway across the center. I'm going to go to the next basket. I have done that already. What has happened here is I've created this little pathway here. This one is coming down. I have to add a new rib or pardon me, I have to add a new piece of weaver. Cut off your end so you have a nice flat end. Again, I'm going to place this underneath, or on top of the weaving I've already done. On top of. Hide it under a spoke, and, and true, it doesn't really hide. Come down here. And it gets a little tighter to work this piece 
over and under. So sometimes when I come to this part, I start feeding the end back and forth and then pulling the whole length. This is a really fun basket to make, and once you've made one and understand the concept of it, it's one that you don't have to think about, so it's a nice one to, to do while somebody's visiting or you, you're able to talk and not really think about this one too much. But I kind of find that true with any basket in the egg family. Once you learn how to, to uh, get the concept, it goes pretty easy. All I'm doing now is filling in this space in here which will be weaving back and forth. Butt them up in tight. Remember to pull it tight when you come to a, a hoop because we don't want to have any loose quarter inch on that hoop. And again, I'm getting a little bit tight in here, so I'm going to have to come in and feed that end back and forth through. Go for a few spokes. Oops, I can't get a hold of it. There we go. And. Uh, and then come back and pull your end. I work with shorter lengths on this, maybe like six foot lengths to give you an idea because it does get tattered going back and forth between this. In fact, I have a split on this one, which doesn't really alarm me. I can simply cut it off and add a new piece. But if you work with too long of lengths, what's going to happen is you're going to tatter it so bad that it's going to look shabby. So I would cut that off. When I go to end it, well, before I do that, let's go ahead and add this new piece. This one I can easily hide right under the hoop. Weave this back and forth. On the, on the model here, I did stain that. I really like the basket stains. They're made for baskets. I would like to give you a formula. If you have a wood stain, there are a lot of nice wood colored stains on the market. But if it says that it seals the wood, don't use it on your basket. It's going to become very, very brittle. These baskets should outlive us. Our grandkids should enjoy our baskets. So don't use a wood stain if it says it's going to seal the basket or seal the wood. What you need to do is take one cup of your wood stain Add it to one cup of odorless turp and one to two tablespoons of linseed oil. And that will take and make a, a really nice basket stain. But there are also basket stains on the market. Now, what has happened here, I have this edge filled up here. So I'm going to take this piece and weave it back, make sure I stay on this side of the weaving. Weave it back here. I'll have to make probably two turns yet on this side here. Then when I come back, I will have these two ends. I have two ends, one from each side. And I'm going to bring one up, bring the other up, and they're going to overlap and hide, up e hide underneath each other like that. A really uh, nice, easy basket to make. I'm really excited about the baskets that we'll be working on next week. This one's called my Wild Things wall pouch has a grapevine handle, another variation of the same basket, lots of naturals in it, uh, palm seeds, core, yarn, whatever you have on hand or whatever you can find in the wild, we can use in these baskets. I'll look forward to seeing you next week.